Good morning, everyone. It is so amazing to see all your lovely faces in person. Uh, we are so thankful that all of you have come out to support ethnic studies and its value of educational representation. Welcome to the AB 101 Teacher History Coalition press conference and Teach Ethnic Studies Rally. My name is Alvin Lee, and I'm the executive founder of Gen Up, which is hosting this rally with Diversifier Narrative as part of the Teacher History Coalition to fight for ethnic studies. We are so thankful that all of you have come out today to support ethnic studies and its value of educational representation. Hi all, uh, my name is Jasmine Wen. I'm the co-founder and co-CEO of Diversifier Narrative, which is a youth-led nationwide nonprofit that focuses on anti-racism and educational equity. We are here to request that Governor Newsom sign AB 101 into law. This bill would mandate ethnic studies as a high school graduation requirement for all California high schools. We believe in the potential of ethnic studies to revolutionize and reshape the way we approach teaching race in the classroom. And we are eager to make ethnic studies a reality for future generations of students. The history of the Sacramento area and people is rich in heritage, culture, and tradition. And so for that reason, I'm going to give a quick land disclaimer. This area was and still is the tribal land of the Nissan people. Sacramento was a gathering place for many local tribes who have lived throughout the Central Valley and the foothills for generations and were the original stewards of this land. We would like to acknowledge the Southern Maidu people to the north, the Valley and Plains Miwok Miwok peoples to the south of the American River, and would also like to honor the Patwin Winson peoples to the west of the Sacramento River. We acknowledge that we are standing on the tribal lands of Sacramento's indigenous peoples. We would also like to acknowledge the absence of indigenous speakers at this rally. We recognize that our work in ethnic studies cannot be heard without the hard work of indigenous activists and scholars before us and how our institution rests on stolen native land. And while we hoped in to bring in indigenous speakers, admittedly and unfortunately, some plans fell through at the last minute and for this we sincerely apologize. And in future events and in all the work we do, we'll be sure to have indigenous speakers present. Just wanted to state that. But yeah, Kimberly? And my name is Kimberly Wu. Sorry, it's a little bit tall. And I'm the director of Gen Up Collegiate. I'm so thankful that everyone has taken the time today to make space for ethnic studies. Now to energize everyone at this bright and early time, I'd like to lead a chant to represent the solidarity and voices that ethnic studies holds to you. Okay, so the chant goes like, what do we want? And then everyone says ethnic studies, and then when do we want it now? So I'm gonna step a little bit farther from the microphone. So everyone like get pumped, get energized. So what do we want? Ethnic studies. What do we want it? Now. What do we want? Ethnic studies. What do we want it? Now. Okay, thank you for joining me in that chant. We have a great list of speakers ranging from student activists, state representatives, and civil rights icon, Dr. Karen Komatsu out here today. But now I would like to pass the microphone to Alvin again to introduce our first speaker, Assembly Member Jose Medina. Thank you. Assembly Member Medina is the chair of the Higher Education Committee and represents the 61st Assembly District. Prior to his time in the legislature, he was a teacher where he learned the value of ethnic studies in the classroom. He has championed the need to implement ethnic studies throughout his time in the legislature and is the author of the most recent bill, AB 101. So please welcome Assembly Member Medina to the podium. Good morning. Thank you all, thank you Alvin, thank you Kimberly, Jasmine for this warm introduction. I am pleased to be standing here with you today and could not be more proud of our students from Gen Up and Diversify Our Narrative who've organized this event. This is your moment and this is your legislation. When I introduced the bill not too long ago on the floor of the assembly, I held up the 20,000 uh, petition signatures that uh, Gen Up had gathered and said that this was a, a modern organization using uh, technology for a political uh, organization. So this morning, really what I'd like to do is thank lots of people who have been very instrumental 
in uh, getting AB 101 to the governor's desk. As all of you know, nothing happens in this building with the, by just one individual. So I want to thank the chairs of all the ethnic caucuses, the chairs, the vice chairs of all those caucuses, the members of the caucuses who worked hard, who stood with me, and what a proud moment it was yesterday when members stood behind me as I uh, brought for the last time AB 101 uh, to the uh, assembly floor. I also want to acknowledge some people who worked uh, before. Former assembly member Luis Alejo, who introduced the legislation to create the curriculum. A hero of mine, Gil Cedillo, who taught me about tenacity, about never giving up. Gil Cedillo was the first author of the driver's license bill. I want to also acknowledge some of the, the people in Riverside. My first Chicano Studies professor, Carlos Cortez, who has been a role model in all my teaching and all my years, and who I hope will be with me when the governor signs this bill in the not too distant future. And some of the individuals in Riverside, artist, Maneo Kubo, who was an RCC student, artist, and then was uh, taken away to the camps uh, during, uh, during the World War II. The family of Harada, also of Riverside. In, uh, in Riverside, we have what is known as the Harada House. The Harada family challenged the California alien land law when the Harada family and Mr. Harada bought the house in Riverside, uh, challenging the law that prohibited Asian Americans from owning land and property in California. So these are a couple of the things that are going to be taught and that all students in California will be able to learn with AB 101. Uh, what we're doing here is just the beginning, and it is for the students. And again, thank you to the students for lifting their voices and demanding that education include all. So it's a proud moment to be here. I look forward to the governor signing AB 101. Thank you. Once again, thank you so much, Assemblymember Medina, for championing this historic bill through the California State Legislature for all 6.2 million California public school students. Next up, we have Assemblymember David Chu. As a member of the California State Legislature, David Chu represents the 17th Assembly District, which encompasses Eastern San Francisco. Assemblymember Chu was the first Asian American to serve as president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors and the first Asian American to represent Eastern San Francisco in the California State Legislature. Please welcome Assemblymember David Chu. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Is today a historic day? Are we excited? Let's feel the energy. Thank you. You know, what happened yesterday was a collective effort by so many communities, by so many community leaders, by each and every one of you standing up, being counted. But there is one person here more than anyone who made this happen. And if I could carry him on my shoulders, let's give it up for Jose Medina. Thank you, Jose, for your leadership. Listen, I'm going to be brief and say the following, and I know what I'm about to say is true for every legislator here. I would not be here but for what I learned in school around my heritage. When I was a freshman in college, I had no intent of thinking about politics or running for office or becoming the lawyer that I became. Something happened in the middle of my freshman year. There were eight Asian students at a college nearby that were attacked. They were attacked subject to intense racial slurs, and the football players at their school who attacked them in an anti-Asian hate incident were never brought to justice. And I got a call. There was a call put out to students to come and protest. And despite those protests, nothing happened. But I was upset, and I started studying, and I started taking classes, and I learned about the Chinese Exclusion Act and the lynching of Chinese Americans in our state. And I learned about the Japanese American internment camps. 
I learned about the murder of Vincent Chin. For those of you who know, it was the seminal anti-Asian hate crime in our community. And years later, I decided to go to law school. I decided to run for office. And as the first Asian American to represent Eastern San Francisco, I think often about the fact that I stand on the floor of a legislator, of a legislature, that once moved the first anti-Asian exclusion laws. And this is true, this experience, whether you're black, whether you're Latinx, whether you're Native American, whether you are any of the incredible examples of diversity that is currently represented in our legislature. I am ethnic studies. We are all ethnic studies. And this is why, through the power of us coming together, California is the great state that we are. We are stronger because of our diversity. Our students will be more successful as they learn about our heritage and our studies. And this is why it's so important that Governor Newsom signed this, and I believe he will. I'm just going to say that. I'm going to be optimistic. Um, but this is why it's so important that we keep moving together, because this is what the fight for justice is all about. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get this done. Thank you, Assemblyman Buchu, for all your efforts as well. Right now, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Karen Korematsu. Dr. Karen Korematsu, the founder and executive director of Fred T. Korematsu Institute and daughter of the civil rights hero, Fred Korematsu. Karen is a civil rights activist, national speaker, educator, and recently appointed as a California State Ambassador to Education by Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tony Thurman. So without further ado, let's please welcome Dr. Karen Komatsu. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, th thank you, uh, Jenna, uh, for inviting me and uh, teach our history uh, as well. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. I love coming back to uh, the, the Capitol uh, because many times our our state uh, legislators honor uh, Fred Korematsu Day of Civil Liberties in the Constitution on January 30th, which is in perpetuity for the state of California. And this is part of our, of our education, of our diversity in this state. Uh, when I was growing up in, in the East Bay, I'm a native Californian, born in Oakland. Uh, you know, certainly ethnic studies was not even, even a, a topic. Uh, and I didn't even learn about the, uh, the uh, Japanese American incarceration until I was in high school when I was 16 years old. Uh, but when I was growing up, uh, all, always around the time of Pearl Harbor, uh, the teacher would, uh, on December 7th, would say, oh, uh, the Japanese were very bad people. They came to, um, um, uh, you know, to Hawaii to, uh, to embalmed and killed over 2,000 servicemen. And that was the end of the conversation. So I was always blamed at that time of the year uh, for, the, for the bombing of Pearl Harbor. It was my fault. Go home where you, uh, where you came from. You don't belong here. And we're still hearing that today because of the COVID-19 virus. Uh, and that's wrong. And that's why it's so important to teach about our diverse heritage in this country. And we do that through ethnic studies. Uh, you know, the, the struggles of, of immigration, the fight for civil rights, the, our fight for just to, to be here and to be inclusive. Diversity and inclusiveness is, uh, is ethnic studies. And, and that's why it's so important for the governor to, to sign this bill. Thanks to uh, California State Superintendent Tony Thurman, who has ensured that we now have curriculum in place for the state of California where we can go forward and the school districts can take the, this curriculum and, and teach you know, to their diverse population. Uh, it's, it's important that we have these materials. We're adding to it. It's, you know, obviously we had some pushback. It wasn't perfect, I'll be honest. But we do want other lesson plans of th that can be put into a portal that's already arranged with the state of California Department of Education. So there is opportunity. 
and there's the opportunity to tell our stories. Students like to see themselves in history. You know, there's a big dropout rate still of, of uh, high school students, and that's why it's important to have ethnic studies so they can see themselves in history. That's what's important, right, students? Yeah, right. And, and so we, we want to make them better citizens, to be civically engaged. Um, and this is the opportunity. Governor, this is a, a pivotal movement in education that we hope you will take by signing AB 101. And thank, thanks to the California State legislate, legislators, um, especially um, Assemblymember Medina, for taking the charge uh, and never giving up I must add, to make sure that this bill got passed. I, I know the history. I've been watching, so thank you so much. And, uh, and this, like I said, is about our diversity and, and inclusion, uh, about teaching about humanity. The thread that runs through all of us is important you know, as, as, as we go forward and try to make change in this world. We have a lot of issues. Climate change, that is everyone. So this is about all of us. And as my father said, uh, uh, remember to, you know, to stand up for what is right. I'm standing up for AB 101. I want the governor to, to sign this uh, wonderful bill for the future of, of, our, of our children. And speaking of future, get vaccinated and keep our children safe. Thank you. Thank you once again to Dr. Karen Komatsu for that wonderful speech and definitely yes, please get vaccinated. I would also like to introduce my great friend, Alvin Lee, who is our next speaker. Alvin Lee is the founder and executive director of GenUp, co-lead of the Diver Teach Our History Coalition and a current freshman at Claremont McKenna College, studying public policy and government. As a tireless community organizer, education activist, and student leader, he's a strong believer in the power of education to address systemic social inequities. So without further ado, let's please welcome Alvin Lee. My name is Alvin Lee, and I serve as a representative to over 4,000 student voices across California through the youth educational advocacy organization, GenUp. Last summer, Gen Up and Diversifier Narrative was proud to lead the youth charge on passing AB 331 through the Senate. In the span of over a week, our petition urging the legislature to pass AB 331 gathered more than 26,000 signatures from students, educators, and parents across California. We also hosted a statewide rally for AB 331 that had more than 300 plus student rally goers and featured our very own state superintendent of public instruction, Tony Thurmond. It's clear from this that California students want ethnic studies and we want it now. Now is the time. For myself, I came, a, I came from a fairly large middle-class suburb in the East Bay. My school district was more than 50% Asian and the high school I attended was 85% Asian American. The lack of diversity thereof in my school often led to ignorance and complacency. Too often, I found my peers saying offhand racist remarks, performing little microaggressions, and judging others by untrue stereotypes. And though they weren't trying to consciously be racist, it was a lot of the subconscious implicit biases that caused these inaccurate perceptions. Vulnerability and honesty here is key. The large majority of Asian students in my school district come from first generation families whose parents immigrated to the US maybe 10 or 20 years ago. For many of them, English was not their first language. My parents grew up in rural, impoverished Hunan, China, a much more homogenous province where they weren't taught about race and racial diversity in their school textbooks and curriculum. Growing up in a predominantly Asian community and a household where my parents talked little about race and inclusion, I often grew up in complete ignorance of my own racial biases and the diversity of the education system here in California that serves us. A lot of students feel much more comfortable when they can see themselves and their cultures in their teachers, administrators, and counselors. Implementation of curriculum that better educates students on implicit bias, institutional racism, and the histories of all the diverse cultures and races in California's education system is imperative. Why? Because better understanding our peers' cultures, heritage, and history is a good start to dismantling stereotypes and implicit bias. 
restructuring and rewriting history cur curriculum that more inclusively depicts and represents all of the communities of color that work to build America into what it is today is crucial. California's education system can do better for their students, and we must. California has a unique opportunity to lead by example and show the country what creating a more inclusive future through education can look like. So now is the time to act. We need to act without ignorance and lead with courage and a diverse, inclusive, and positive vision for the future. And that is why, as a former California public school student graduate, I'm strongly urging Governor Newsom to sign Assembly Bill 101 into law. Thank you. Next up, we have my good friend, Jasmine Nguyen. Jasmine Nguyen is the co-founder and co-CEO of Diversifier Narrative, co-lead of the Teacher History Coalition and a rising junior at Stanford University, double majoring in comparative studies in race and ethnicity and international relations. As a proud second generation Vietnamese American and first generation college student, she is passionate about racial justice and educational equity and, and is excited to now speak and fight for ethnic studies. Please welcome Jasmine. Hi all, I'm Jasmine. Um, I am the co-founder of Diversifier Narrative as uh, mentioned by Alvin. And once again, I really want to thank not only all of you for being here, but also everyone within the organization that has made it what it is and has allowed me to come speak here today. Um, there's definitely been so much work in the coalition done by my teammates at Diversifier Narrative. Um, and I'm really grateful for the work and the labor that they put in. So I'd like to begin with a little bit of an anecdote of my own. So I mentioned, as Alvin mentioned, I'm a second generation Vietnamese American. And so I've always felt somewhat disconnected to my culture. As a kid, my parents did not teach me Vietnamese uh, because they were afraid that I would be harassed or bullied or potentially even hate crimes. I grew up feeling the way a lot of second generation kids do. Like I wasn't Asian enough, but also I wasn't quite fully American. And since then, I've actively worked to understand my identity and my sense of self. I wanted to delve deeper into my racial identity specifically, and so I took my first class on the Vietnamese American experience upon entering my university. The class was called Introduction to Asian American History, taught by Professor William Gao, and it was the first time that I felt my history was being taught through an empowered perspective. Rather than purely through a victimized lens, my community was put at the forefront. Rather than reading about my people purely as victims of the war, I learned about my people as having agency over their own stories, to learn their complex narratives of grief, loss, hope, and resilience as they work together to make space in this country. Because of courses like these, I decided to actually major in ethnic studies, or as my university calls it, comparative studies in race and ethnicity. I was able to see the refugee narratives of my parents reflected in the text that we read. Alongside learning Vietnamese history, I learned about the work of BIPOC as a collective in the fight for racial justice in America, and the specific contributions of black, brown, and indigenous organizers that have paved the way for our fight today. I learned about collective struggle and the power of those that came before us, and I want future students to know of their struggle and contributions. I want to emphasize the importance of solidarity and unity and thank all of those who pave the way for ethnic studies as we most certainly are not the first. I understand that not everyone has the opportunity to go to college and to learn what I did. And for this reason, I strongly urge Governor Newsom to sign AB 101. I ask that we all be able to see ourselves reflected in the narrative. Thank you. Thank you again, Jasmine, for that wonderful speech and definitely heart-touching story. We would like to introduce our next speaker, Assemblymember Garcia, who, is a, who has first-hand experience working in multiple classrooms settings as a math teacher for 13 years prior to being elected to the State Assembly. So without further ado, please welcome Assemblymember Christina Garcia, also known as the Period Princess. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. I want to start off by thanking all these young students who have been activating and organizing for years, reminding us that it's never too early to be the agents and leaders that we need. And so 
Thank you, you guys, for all your work. I also want to thank and congratulate Jose Medina. I've seen his tenacity here multiple years now. Uh, this has been a labor of love for him, and he's never given up ensuring that this gets done, but it, it's done with integrity, and we have a bill that we could all be proud of. And so I want to thank you for your leadership uh, out there, uh, Prof. Medina, and making sure that we get this done. And so congratulations on this next step that I'm sure is going to get signed soon. So I want to thank you for that as well. I am Christina Garcia, a state assembly member from Southern California. I am Ethics Studies. I'm a daughter of immigrants. My first language was Spanish. Uh, and I'm a math teacher, and I was a math student, and I loved it out there. But in part because I knew early on that math was in my history. Uh, the number zero, the Mayans help revolutionize that, and that's the genesis of calculus that we have today out there. And so I was, I was lucky enough that in eighth grade, I learned about that history out there. And that was always what I would go back to to say, well, if I'm struggling here, this is in my roots. I could get forward out there and push forward and be the good student that I want to be and enjoy this. And so I was lucky I got to see myself in that history, even though I didn't see myself in the classroom or uh, <laughs> with my teachers or in what I was learning. I learned that through a program outside of my school as well. And so I've had that experience, but I want to talk about the experience as a math teacher out there. I was a math teacher for 13 years, and students struggle out there. We talk about students of color. There's been a lot of false narrative that somehow this is going to take away from instructional time, or somehow this is going to create division, or somehow this is going to make our students who are struggling struggle even more out there. But the reality is what I got to see firsthand is that when students do their history, the good, the bad, and the ugly, they were better motivated than were better students in all the classrooms, including my math classrooms. And so we would take time out to discuss that history on a regular basis in my classroom to ensure that they had a reason to come, that they saw themselves uh, in the education out there. And so I was not a history teacher. I was not an ethnic studies teacher out there. But I realized the power of knowing our history. And so I'm excited that our students are going to start to see themselves in the classroom, that it's going to be intentional, that we're going to be talking about race. And I know that's scary. I know that that might be inconvenient for some people. But the status quo hasn't been working for our students. And so we want to move our community forward. We want to make sure all of our students are thriving. This is an important step that we need to be uh, implemented. And so for that reason, I'm urging Governor Brown to sign this bill. And just so appreciative that future students are going to be able to have these opportunities and not have to wait till they go to college or be lucky enough to be in a summer program that taught them about this stuff out there. And so that's the importance of this, to ensure that all of our students out there see themselves reflected and are learning their history. And so just congratulations to all of you. Thank you again to all the activists and thank you to Jose Medina, Assemblymember Medina, for being a champion on this and never giving up. Thank you. Next up, we have Senator Dave Ming. Senator Dave Ming represents Senate District 37, which includes parts of Orange County. And Senator Ming is a co-author of AB 101. Thank you so much, Senator Ming. Thank you, Bumi. Um, I want to thank Assemblymember Medina for bringing this bill forward. And I also want to thank the students back here, because I know that this bill had a lot of struggles and would not have passed, I think, without the really engaged activism of all of you behind me and the many other students that were advocating for this. Now, as many of you know, I am a former UC professor. I was teaching at the law school at UC Irvine until late last year. And I can tell you firsthand that there is really a dearth of the teaching of our history, of different history and historical perspectives uh, that really becomes a deficit by the time students reach college and grad school. Uh, and this bill has been a long time coming. Uh, if, you know, I grew up in California. When I was a kid, uh, as a Korean American with no other Korean Americans around, with maybe a handful of Asian Americans, uh, I wasn't taught about Asian history. I wasn't taught about Korean history. No one knew what Korea was other than that it was a place we went to war at a long, long time ago. Uh, and it wasn't really until I went to college and law school that I learned about why there was such a paucity of Asian Americans, uh, that my parents were part of that first generation of post-65 immigrants. I didn't know about the Chinese Exclusion Act. I didn't know about the racial quotas that kept people from Africa and Asia and other parts of the world uh, limited in the numbers of, that were allowed to come to this country. So I'm here as a proud co-author of this measure um, because I think it is important and it's long past due. And I know there's a lot of myths out there about what this bill does. And I can tell you firsthand uh, that this is a thoughtful bill. 
It's the product of a lot of legislative discussion, and no, it is not a bill that is racist. No, it's not a bill that's anti-white. This is a bill that is trying to teach and trying to implement the teaching of a complete and comprehensive history. You can't teach math without teaching multiplication. And yet for too long in this country, in this state, we have abided by the teaching of history, of American history, without a complete perspective, without people like me, without people uh, from China, from Africa, from Latin America, and their perspectives reflected in our history books. And so it's about damn time that we have this. Uh, I'm proud of this bill. I, I think it's really, really important for uh, making sure that as, as we face so much division and racism today, that we are able to better understand the, the beautiful cultural fabric that is America and the history of that fabric as well. So thank you very much to all of you behind me. Thank you very much, Assemblymember Medina. And I do hope that Governor Newsom signs this bill into law. And I guess the next speaker is going to be um, Ethan Collier, Collegiate Director of Communications at GenUp. Good morning. Okay, this is low. All right. Good morning. My name is Ethan Collier, and I am proud to serve as the National Director of Communications for Genem Collegiate. As a queer Chicana individual living in East County, San Diego, and attending school in the South Bay region, anti-racist and ethnic studies curriculum was heavily unavailable and rarely discussed in our classrooms. I would even assist my own mother, an elementary school teacher, in ensuring that her history and social science lessons were not Eurocentric, as there were no resources available to her besides the curriculum given to her by the school district. It was not until I was a student in the UC Berkeley Summer Bridge Program that I was exposed to ethnic studies and anti-racist curriculum in an educational setting. The course, Minorities in a Majority Culture with Dr. Rose Wilkerson, has forever changed my perspective on education at, the bo at both the K-12 and college levels. And I would like to thank Dr. Rose Wilkerson for her amazing instruction in concepts such as the new Jim Code, the consequences of predictive policing technology, and the gentrification associated with the Native American reservation system. It is now time for our high school students to have permanent access to this vital learning as their development as globally minded citizens and the leaders of our generation. It is time for us to, share, to cherish, appreciate, and learn of cultural diversity, inclusion, and end racial and discriminatory biases within our education system. It is now time to pass AB 101. Thank you so much for your time. Sorry, I have to keep adjusting because people are really tall here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ethan, for that wonderful speech. I really appreciate that story and especially with you helping out with your mother. Next, I want to introduce Assemblywoman Luce Rivas, who represents the 39th Assembly District, which includes the Northeast San Fernando Valley. The Assemblywoman is a proud co-author of AB101, and we're happy to have her here with us today to say a few words. So without further ado, please welcome Assemblymember Luce Rivas. Thank you. Good morning. I'm very excited to be here. I'm Assemblywoman Luce Rivas from the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles, where my family came from Mexico in the 1950s and 60s. So we've been here a long time, but unfortunately all my cousins, my sister, and my family, we all went through LA public schools and we never learned about our own history. We never learned about other groups, other people of color um, that have been here in California, in the United States. Uh, and, but that day, that is never gonna happen to a high school student anymore, right? We are going to get this bill signed. And I know all the young people that are behind me, Assembly Member Jose Medina, is, we're all gonna continue fighting to make sure that the governor signs this because it's so important um, that we learn about our history. And to be honest, I'm very jealous of these young people, the next generation, that are gonna have this as a high school course because I didn't have it and it's just gonna empower so many more people. All these young people are gonna feel like they're learning about themselves. They're gonna see themselves in the curriculum when they're in the classroom. Um, and that's why I decided to be a co-author of this bill. 
uh, because it, this is something that's long overdue and I know that many have spent years fighting for this and that's why I'm glad to be here um, to join all of you. Thank you and let's keep this fight going. Thank you. Next up, we have Sam Beneval. Sam Beneval is an incoming freshman at Stanford University and serves as GenF's policy director. Sam believes the most effective means of creating educational equity is to make space for a diverse set of student voices wherever decisions are being made, re-examining school funding processes, and focus on the holistic student while developing policy campaigns. Please welcome Sam. Hi, my name is Sam Benabu, and I serve as a representative to over 4,000 student voices across California through the Youth Edu Educational Advocacy Organization, GenUp. As the only Jewish student at my high school, I have come to value the power of empathy and perspective. When the word Jew became used as an everyday insult, I was not angry at my peers. When my teachers continuously failed to understand why I was not at school during Jewish holidays such as Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, my frustration was not directed towards my teachers. I direct these feelings towards the current educational system that is complicit in these microaggressions. As students entering society made up of different cultures, experiences, and histories, we deserve to understand and be understood. California needs AB 101 to ensure each student is prepared to be an engaged, thoughtful, and empathetic member of our racially, ethnically, and culturally diverse communities. I believe in a world where casual insults do not discriminate against entire religions or ethnicities. I believe in a world where being understood is a right, not a privilege. I believe in a world where students realize the nuances and significance of social movements. I know this is only possible with AB 101. The reality is that we cannot progress without examining the sacrifices, triumphs, and pains suffered by our ancestors. Moreover, AB 101 is not only for the students. Students, teachers, and administrators, regardless of their sexual orientation, ethnicity, or religion, have everything to gain from the newfound respect and collective understanding provided by ethnic studies. AB 101's emphasis on cross-cultural perspectives and self-exploration transforms our school learning environments into safe spaces where underrepresented students can embrace their identities, where students can become confident in their ideas, skin, and voice. Thank you to the assembly members and all the student activists who have worked hard to create a more equitable and accessible framework in AB 101. Passing AB 101 means that students of all backgrounds, including Jewish students, can find solidarity in expressing the narratives and identities. It is our duty to ensure that if a student cannot call home or any other place safe, they will always have the classroom. Thank you. Next up, please welcome Isabel Huerta. Isabel Huerta is a junior at UC Berkeley and the press secretary and communications executive to the Office of the Student Body President. She is double majoring in ethnic studies and was a local activist in Santa Barbara, California for implementing ethnic studies as a high school graduation requirement as part of the larger Ethnic Studies Now Santa Barbara Coalition. Please welcome Isabel. Thank you for the introduction, Alvin. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to say on behalf of the Office of the President, on behalf of my younger self who so desperately wanted the teachings of ethnic studies, who found ethnic studies my freshman year of high school, collecting signatures for petitions alongside organizer Fabio Gonzalez for the Ethnic Studies Now Coalition, working against, pushing against our school district to remind them of the need. Today is an important and influential day. It is a day that exemplifies the arduous and transformative work of communities that have been fighting for our youth to learn from a curriculum that acknowledges the triumphs and tribulations of people of color, a revised archive that inspires our students to be proud of their heritage, contributions, and history beyond our current European horizons, an ethnic studies curriculum. Growing up, I learned very early on that my role as a student was not to celebrate or openly recognize my culture, but to assimilate into one and learn from material that did not honor my existence. Unfortunately, this experience is known all too well by students of color across the nation. 
We also know that this is a system, sy symptom of a larger pathology, a deeply rooted issue in the current status quo in education, where students of color are alienated and pushed out by their academics instead of being empowered by them. Bills like AB 101 ensure that we are actively addressing and engaging our students about systemic issues that help us further advocate for a world where known languages, cultures, and identities beyond the binary, beyond the Eurocentric canon, are not only acknowledged, but centered. A world which students are taught to think critically about the very system that educates them and prepares them for social action. Today, I implore Governor Gavin Newsom to sign into law AB 101. If we are to secure the future of all students, and I'm very hopeful that we will, um, for those who the current system has not served well, we need to stand up for the students who need and deserve to see themselves as actors in the curriculum. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Isabel Huerta, for that awesome speech. Next up, we have Sydney Roberts. Sydney Roberts is a sophomore studying African American studies and political science at the University of California, Berkeley, and currently serves as a chief of staff in the office of the student body president. Please welcome Sydney Roberts. Hello, everybody. I want to start by thanking you all today for your dedication to tangible change. Last summer, the world was met with a social movement that demanded change on a national and systemic level. For many people, the Black Lives Matter movement was their first encounter advocating against racial injustice and joining a unified call to action. Even after thousands of people expressed their support, many struggled to identify the type of change needed to affirm the value of black lives. Our nation saw change manifest through a collective shift in the narrative surrounding disparities and how black people are treated people began understanding the importance of sharing history through a racial lens. When this change was, while this change was significant, change must also be written. It must be transcribed in our history and reiterated time and time again to ensure that future generations do not make the same mistakes. Today, I'm advocating that we officially enact AB 101 to confirm that California representatives listen to demands for a curriculum that teaches students a history that encompasses the the contributions of black people and people of color. As a black student with a California K-12 public school background, the majority of what I was taught in class excluded the accomplishments of my community and failed to explain the systemic barriers that still impact individuals like me. This longing for inclusion pushed me to pursue a degree in African American Studies at Berkeley. The curriculum I am now receiving continues to reinforce my belief that ethnic studies should be a requirement for younger students. Learning about the tribulations various communities of colors have, color have faced and how they triumph or continue to challenge oppressive systems today strengthens one's empathy and understanding of, a ra of race's role in the world. Teaching ethnic studies will equip students with the knowledge needed to improve our society and appreciate diversity. Officially enacting AB 101 will be the most impactful step California takes toward its commitment to progress. I'm grateful to be able to advocate for such important and tangible change. Thank you. Next up, and finally, we have Kimberly Wu, the Collegiate Director of GenUp. Kimberly Wu is the Collegiate Director of the nationwide youth educational advocacy organization, GenUp. As a UC Berkeley junior, triple majoring in political science, legal studies, and ethnic studies, she advocates for the power of ethnic studies to unsilence and empower narratives of color. Please welcome Kimberly. Thank you, Alvin, for the introduction again. I also want to start off a chant because this is the last speaker. So it goes like, when I say ethnic, you say studies. So just for a few times, ethnic studies, ethnic studies, ethnic studies. Yes, that, there we go. Hi, everyone. It is such a pleasure to see all of you today. My name is Kimberly Wu, and I'm the director of Genif Collegiate and a junior at UC Berkeley. But most importantly, I fight for ethnic studies. For some context, I'm half Chinese and half Filipina. Only did my subconscious disassociation with my culture come to light in my junior year of high school in my AP US history class. 
I vividly remember the year 1882. 1882, the Chinese Exclusion Act was the first time a racially exclusive act, a racially explicit exclusive act, was passed in the United States of America to explicitly prohibit immigration of Chinese laborers, preventing almost all Chinese immigrants from entering the United States. Now, it's ironic that the first time I heard of Chinese people, or even Asian people in America in school, was the Chinese Exclusion Act. Because in order for there to even be an Exclusion Act, there had to have been Chinese people in America in the first place. Yet nobody told me about the contributions of Chinese people to the transcontinental railroad. No one told me about the booming cultural and economic Chinatowns. Yet the story of Chinese Americans starts with oppression. And this is one story of many. I only learned about the Spanish-American War in 1898 and how it seceded the Philippines to the United States without learning about the con Filipinos' contributions to the Delano Grape Strike to advocate for farm worker rights. I only learned about celebrating Thanksgiving as a friendly holiday without being taught the cultural genocide upon Amer Native Americans, nor anything about their wise indigenous knowledge of the land. I only learned about the violence that the Black Panther Party supposedly, supposedly perpetuated in an act of courage and self-defense without learning about their true core of community organizing through free breakfast programs and voter registration drives. Each example is one of thousands to highlight how our educational curriculum tends to exclude narratives from communities of color, which exasperates the suppression and marginalization and permits an environment to foster racism out of ignorance. After having the fortunate opportunity to take an ethnic studies course in high school with an amazing teacher, Ms. Christina Trujillo, which inspired me to pursue the academic field at UC Berkeley, I believe everyone should take an ethnic studies course because ethnic studies empower students by giving them the critical tools to begin understanding the diverse experiences of communities of color, to feel empowered and learn about our cultures and to combat racism within their community. That's why I fight for ethnic studies. I fight for my history and the rich histories of people of color to be taught. We fight for our voices and faces to be represented in our textbooks, classrooms, and conversations. We fight for anti-racist educational curriculum that opens a space for us to acknowledge our country's oppressive history and current present to avoid risking the same mistakes in our future. I fight for the love, empowerment, and solidarity that ethnic studies holds true to its core. And we fight for ethnic studies. And I implore Gavin Newsom to sign this bill into law, and I thank especially Assemblymember Medina and its co-authors, also the student activists who have been deeply involved in this effort, and the leaders before us in ethnic studies. And I thank you all for being here today. Thank you all for being here today. I know we're running a bit long, so we'll now head into closing. Wow, what an exciting press conference and rally. Thank you everyone for coming out to the and thank you everyone for coming out to the electeds who supported the bill, to the students who fought tirelessly for a brighter and more inclusive future, to the broader California community for rising up to the calls for racial justice, and of course to Assemblymember Medina and his wonderful team for championing this historic bill through the California State Legislature. Us students could not be more excited about the prospect of AB 101 and the wide-ranging positive effects it will have on 6.2 million public school students. California is not only a domestic leader, but a global leader. Actions here have reverberating and consequential effects across the nation. As a national leader on a whole range of issues, California has a unique opportunity to lead by example and show the country what creating a more inclusive future through education can look like. Us youth are confident that if California becomes the first state in the nation to mandate ethnic studies as a high school graduation requirement, many more states across the US will follow. Yes, and that's exactly right. Now is the time. Let's rise to the occasion and meet the moment. The voices gathered here today have been loud and clear. We want ethnic studies and we want it now. That is why we respectfully requesting Governor Newsom to sign this historic legislation into law. Yes, on AB 101. Thank you so much for everyone to come out here today. And I just want to finish off with another round of chants. So start basically how we ended. Again, it's like, what do we want? Ethnic studies. And when do we want it? Now. So I'm just going to start it again. Um, 
What do we want? Ethnic studies. What do we want it? Now. What do we want? Ethnic studies. What do we want it? Now. Now. Okay, perfect. Also, I'd like to point everyone to this banner that we would love for you to express your thoughts about why we need ethnic studies. And with that, I would just like to say again, thank you to everyone for coming out, and we greatly appreciate you, and we really hope Governor Newsom signs this bill into law. Thank you.